Hello, my name's John Greemer, Head of Channel Sales here at Link, and I'm delighted to present to you today Advanced Planning and Scheduling Deep Dive. But first, a little bit of background on Link. Link uh, provide a uh, manufacturing execution uh, software. Our solution extends and enriches SAP Business One with a plug and play manufacturing operations management solution to provide an MES for a fraction of the typical cost. Today, our software improves the effectiveness of more than 50,000 resources, increasing efficiency, productivity, and profitability of manufacturers. Our software is highly configurable and currently supports both discrete and process-based manufacturers across 15 industries and in more than 10 countries. Link MES is also formed around the international standard for manufacturing operations management, IEC 62264. So our purpose here is to explore how we can maximize our output with effective planning and scheduling. So we're going to have a deep dive into links, advanced planning and scheduling. As such, uh, our webinar agenda will be as follows. We're going to talk about the challenges, common scheduling challenges uh, from our experience. Uh, effective scheduling as defined by the international standard IEC. Uh, 62264, uh, the benefits ad, of advanced planning and scheduling, what your business can achieve with effective scheduling. And we're going to go into a, a demonstration, a real world insight into how Link provides the tools for effective scheduling, and towards the end, uh, a summary. So uh, these are some of the scheduling challenges that um, you've been, uh, a lot of our customers have been faced with um, and, and have uh, obviously uh, moved away uh, from uh, method, some of the methods that you're seeing on the screen now. So, you know, moving away from ERP generated schedules, which are typically infinite, rough cut capacity, unreliable delivery dates, you know, excessive, in, in a, insufficient inventory, you know, and then you've got uh, dissatisfied customers and uh, an increase in cost uh, with Excel spreadsheets um, and whiteboards. You're, you're typically firefighting, slow to react, lack of visibility, low output, increased lead times. And then, of course, uh, tacit knowledge, uh, lack of reliable uh, definition, knowledge in one person's head with no backup, increased risk of er errors, uh, all of these, unfortunately, lead towards uh, an uncompetitive business. Uh, do any of these sound familiar to you? So it's not surprising that many manufacturers are still struggling with these challenges using manual methods uh, to plan and schedule uh, production. So uh, Link provides a single plug and play manufacturing operations management solution, or commonly known an MES solution, formed around the international standard, as I say, IEC 62264, this model that you're seeing on the screen there. This model comprises of eight core activities, but uh, we're, we're gonna focus on the four that are highlighted, the four activities needed for uh, effective planning and scheduling. So uh, resource management, um, that's full resource import from SAP Business One, including machines, employees, tools, and materials. A definition management, uh, full visibility and synchronization of work order imports from B1 with associated capture bombs and root stages uh, needed to produce a product. And then you've got uh, a seamless interaction with Business One, HANA and SQL version 9.3 and above. All of this critical information is available instantly for detailed scheduling. So with detailed scheduling, this really refers to the uh, maximize the use of resources and produce optimum production plans. And then finally, dispatching, that's a real-time update of SAP B1 manufacturing data and dispatching of plans and job lists for online visualization and subsequent 
easy execution across the shop floor. So what are the benefits uh, of uh, effective planning and scheduling using an advanced planning and scheduling tool like Link? So with effective scheduling, you can maximize the loading of resources and achieve high levels of order fulfillment. So the other benefits that you'll see is a timely service to the customers and subsequently high levels of uh, satisfaction. Uh, an increased uh, utilization of resources in the form of equipment and employees, uh, the ability to generate operational efficiencies in your process through product grouping and minimize, minimizing setup and change over time, an increase in overall factory output due to optimized manufacturing workflow. Perhaps the biggest benefit remain competitive in what we know is a really volatile and ever-changing global landscape right now. So in the limited time that I have today, uh, I can only show you some of the solution capabilities around advanced planning and scheduling. Um, so let's take a look. Okay, so uh, the process starts uh, at the point you're going to create a production order in business one. Remember, with Link, you have to have the master data defined within B1. You know, so from 9.3 and above, HANA SQL, you have the ability in business one to create root stages, bills of materials, product definition. Um, you know, the resources to plan and schedule, such as your work centers, your employees, your machines, etc. All of that definition is maintained in business one. So when you create a production order like this one on the screen, 542, that I've just created, that production order is visible in link for planning and scheduling. With the certified integration that we have in place, as soon as you create that production order um, and you set the frequency at which you want to pull in new production orders. It could be every minute, every five minutes, 10 minutes, up to you, but you'll see that new production order that you've created in uh, Lynx APS. So I'm gonna go into the APS, Advanced Planning and Scheduling Tool, and there you see the Link APS, and you're uh, seeing here the database that I'm connected with. This is the main menu. Very easy to navigate, uh, very intuitive and easy to use. But that is the database that I'm connected with. And here is that production order that I created in bus business one. Um, that This is uh, 542. So the Link APS is actually uh, a component of the overall MES solution. It's, it's desktop based and that's deliberate uh, for more power, a better user experience. It's a bit like comparing Excel uh, on your desktop with Excel in the web. You're going to need far more power, and that's why it's des desktop. So essentially what we do, uh, once uh, it's installed, and it doesn't take long at all to install and connect with your database, the first thing we do is we will define uh, shifts and resources. So it starts with a full re resource import, um, you know, your work centers, machines from SAP, uh, building uh, the finite capacity model with activities in terms of time and resources uh, assigned to the machines and other methods based on in, in, uh, infinite capacity. As such, to minimize planned loss. So uh, we go into creating uh, the uh, shifts. So the shift definition. So here's my uh, default shift. Okay, so we're defining capacity in the hours here. So I'm creating a shift. So we're starting from, uh, I think it's 4 a.m. in the morning, uh, right up until midday. Yellow is lunchtime, non-working. And then uh, we're working again until 6 p.m. Uh, and then we have maintenance from 6 p.m. until midnight. This is Sunday. 
and you can see the shift pattern changes again on Monday, Tuesday, and so on. So we create shifts. It's one of the first jobs that you'll do. And again, you can see me moving uh, the working time activity. Um, and uh, yeah, I can adjust this and create multiple shifts and apply these shifts to my work centers to build that um, planning board that you're seeing behind the screen here. Okay, so that's one thing that we do to begin with. And then uh, we are able to uh, define uh, constraints. Um, Link APS is a multi-constraint planning and scheduling tool. So you can create uh, constraints such as uh, tool sets. And there's obviously material constraints here. And uh, uh, Link uh, um, performs time phase material calculations here. So you can see immediately with a production order uh, whether or not you have all the materials available. In this case, um, we have... Uh, colorful uh, traffic light system sort of indicators. Red means you have no materials available on the bomb. Orange, um, partial shortages. And green, you, you have all the materials there. So Link performs time phase material calculations, looking at purchase orders coming in, uh, materials being consumed, and gives the production planner uh, an immediate heads up as to whether or not there are material shortage, shortages there. So uh, once you've created your capacity, um, you're seeing this graphical planning board at the bottom, um, you define your uh, calendar or your planning horizon. So if I go into my planning horizon mindset uh, from today out until the 22nd of November, we can change that to the 31st of October. And whatever that this is set to is reflected on the graphical planning board. They're in fact linked. So um, by doing that, it's very easy for me to see my work centers, all of which say 100% available in the planning horizon, but I can zoom down to a one minute increment or zoom out to see the entire planning horizon. So uh, very easy to see where those bottlenecks are, where that free capacity is, uh, so that you can create that all important reliable production plan. Now we're gonna take a production order 542, I'm going to load the required work centers, the resources. All right. So if I open that production order up to uh, its operational level, you can see uh, the root stages as they're described within business one. So one to uh, eight there. Um, again, all of this data is directly from business one. Um, you're seeing things like setup time, run time the work center that it's going to be scheduled to and so on. So if I take this production order, I'm simply going to drag and drop it down to the planning board. And immediately you'll see the first operation, operation one, uh, uh, and uh, the work center that it can be scheduled to highlighted. And you see me moving the operation on the planning board. The system's actually calculating the length of time this operation will take based on the quantity ordered, uh, the runtime, setup time, and so on. But if I let go of my mouse key here, or if you're lucky enough to have a touch screen, you could drag this down. If I let go, you will see all the other operations scheduled in sequence on the planning board. So if I double click on uh, this uh, particular production order, you'll see all the operations there scheduled in sequence and we can schedule parallel and overlap. Um, but if I move this out, you know, I'm dragging it, I can schedule it to the next day and you see the entire uh, production order and all the uh, operations schedule in sequence on the planning board. You'll also notice back up onto the task panel, a yellow thumbs up, which means it's scheduled on the planning board. We have a new start date, new due date, which will ultimately publish back to business one, production order and business one. So business one in turn is working on a finite capacity basis, not estimated lead times or infinite capacity there. Now, again, in back up onto the task panel, you have uh, many different ways to sort, group and filter your data uh, before scheduling. So for instance, I might uh, filter by color. So maybe I, or size in this case, I only want to see uh, orders that have eight millimeter as a size. So equals eight millimeter. So there I've 
selected that. Now you see I've got 24 production orders that are filtered. Uh, then I might want to group by length. And you see me grouping the data there. Uh, so it's really easy to get to the data that you want uh, in, or in the priority that you want before you schedule either drag or drop or auto schedule onto the planning board. Uh, I can remove the filter. So I'm going to take that filter off. And you see now I've got 346 production orders here. Um, if I apply that filter again, I don't want to see any production orders that don't have a size associated with, with them. So lots of capability there. You can even create custom rules where you can create or define your own rules, your own priorities. And that uh, you'll see the workflow appear uh, across the top here. So that um, negates the need to sort group and filter your data uh, on the task panel. Incidentally, you can bring in other data from business one. So if you wanted to bring in a custom form field, I'd right click on any attribute here like this and bring in other data into that view and use it in my scheduling. Now, what I'm going to do is quickly show you how to auto schedule. I'm going to take all of these production orders and I'm going to click on auto schedule. And um, in auto scheduling, uh, again, you have the option to decide what your priorities are. So I could say don't schedule any production orders that have material shortages, only those that have the materials green there. I can do all sorts of things. I can schedule from certain dates. I can forward schedule, forward load my capacity or backward schedule, typically from the original requested due date. I can consider alternative work centers. So within business one, you've might define that uh, product A should go to CNC machine one, but if CNC machine one is full to capacity, you might want uh, uh, the system to schedule to CNC machine two to keep production moving and so on. Um, but uh, in this case, all I'm going to do is forward schedule all of these production orders automatically. And you see it takes a matter of seconds to schedule. You see revised start dates and due dates. And uh, when I drop these production orders on the planning board. Again, if I double click, you will see uh, some of them actually have dropped in terms of their, their available capacity. I'm zooming in. Uh, you can see some have dropped down to 90% uh, uh, capacity. We And, and in this case, um, you know, some of them, this one in fact, is down to 3% available capacity in the planning horizon. Now I could increase capacity uh, I can adjust my capacity. I can uh, do that quite easily. If I click on this time, uh, I could drag that out or I could put in uh, approved overtime. Approved overtime there. That increases capacity. I can also increase resources. I can put in additional machines or employees in that time to, so that I can extend my available capacity. So you have a lot of flexibility here. Um, if you had a rush order, uh, you have the ability to drop the rush order in and shift everything out to the right, assuming you have capacity to do that. So really easy to create a reliable plan. Um, we also have the ability to schedule uh, production orders that have related uh, jobs. Um, so that could be uh, uh, where you have a parent finished production order. Uh, and in order to produce that finished product, you have uh, multiple sub orders uh, that you uh, uh, want to schedule. So we can schedule the parent order and have all the lower level sub orders scheduled in sequence on the planning board. We even have the ability to create what we call what if orders, and that is a virtual production order that doesn't exist in B1. And it's to answer those can we questions if the customer calls in, can we do this? And you want to give them reliable delivery expectations. So um, you can call up uh, your products like this. Um, so let me uh, do this PC like that. Uh, and uh, the uh, routing, routing, the location, uh, the quantity the customer requires, when do they require it by, uh, and then uh, you can uh, provide a reference. This creates a virtual production order that you can then schedule into your available capacity. So here it is. 
I could drop it on or auto schedule backwards to get it as close to that original due date. But ultimately, when you're happy with your plan, you can save and publish the plan. So by saving and publishing, you are writing back new start dates and new due dates, save and publish. You'll see the thumbs up turn green, the tiles turn uh, green. Incidentally, most production planners will use a large, you know, 40-inch, uh, 60-inch screen to, to see what you're seeing, or they'll use dual screens. Now that plan's published, uh, we are into the dispatching of the plan. So we're into this area of the solution. And uh, here uh, you can see the loading. So um, that is uh, the loading of your resources, how effective that loading is. So you can see the calendar hours, the operating hours, the scheduled hours. And we're looking at a week here, but we could change that to uh, a month. Uh, and then you know, you're, you're going to see that uh, there. I've got uh, uh, the order fulfillment on the right. So for this month of August, 41 orders, 40 scheduled. I can drill in, 36 in progress, nothing running late. Then we've got uh, an online Gantt style view production plan, uh, again, that you can uh, see um, is dynamic in that it is connected with the shop floor data capture. So you can see uh, what is the status of a production order. Uh, you can hover over that production order. You can see a green background. That's the actual labor against the planned labor. Eight hours of planned. We're just over three hours there on this particular production order. And you can see the blue bar stretching across the bottom. That is the actual quantity against the planned quantity. And again, all of these uh, screens are drillable. Um, so if I were to click into this production order with my finger, you know, if you're using a touch screen, uh, you can see a job card view and it will show you there's the production order, there's the customer, there's the sales order, what it is you've got to make, planned hours, actual hours, all the operations, the materials in this case, some have been issued. Uh, if there were any sub jobs related to this, you'll see their uh, status, the any attached documents, because Link provides a paperless shop floor where you can open up any document, uh, whether it's on the shop floor or elsewhere in the business. So it could be a CAD drawing and any production issues that are affecting the execution of the plan. Here's the schedule. And uh, for that production order, you can even look at the transactions related to that production order, whether it's labor, quantities, scrap, et cetera. But that's just directly from this online Gantt style view uh, production plan uh, that you're seeing here. And I'm just uh, moving it like this. I'm uh, zooming in, zooming out. I can see this in list view, for instance. So sh uh, what is uh, scheduled to forging this month or uh, this week? And I can see all of these production orders that are, have been scheduled to the forging work center. Uh, and you can see uh, progress today, progress overall, you know, the plan quantity, actual quantities and so on. And again, drillable into the production order hyperlink there. I can even print a list there as well. Uh, I can look at an equipment plan. Um, so if I wanted to uh, understand, you know, how my resources are uh, equipment is planned, for in this case, I'm looking at a week again, you can see it's 58% loaded, this particular machine, 90% productive, 65% operating. There's the operating hours, productive hours and the downtime. Here's the schedule and the plan there as well, uh, uh, which is available. I can even drill into the uh, production order status, job status as we call it. So again, in a grid view like this, anyone can see this. Um, you can see all your production orders, you can sort group filter, you can customize and bring in other data into this view. We have can filters. So show me all production orders that are in progress, running late, scheduled start to finish uh, like this. Again, these screens can be in French language as well. So that's something to uh, take note of. Again, I can drill in to the job uh, to get more detail, the production order there, just by clicking on the, the production order number. Uh, if I wanted to, I can get a materials list, what materials are required based on a uh, uh, production plan that I created. So if I want to look at the materials required for forging this week, these are the materials uh, and that precise quantity for these production orders, go and get the materials so I can start uh, production. 
Yeah, so these are the materials. And uh, when you need the materials based on the production plan. Um, so this is dispatching of the plan. There are some other reports there. Uh, again, the plan that you create within Link is dispatched, uh, not only updating business one with new start dates and end dates, but also uh, making that plan visible on the shop floor so that you can execute it from those highly configurable terminals out on the shop floor. All the data uh, for the execution, such as labor, quantities, materials, uh, scrap, um, uh, updates, uh, business one. So you can see uh, live work in progress uh, uh, as you're manufacturing. So now I'm going to continue with my slides. So in summary, uh, links advanced planning and scheduling uh, with effective scheduling can be achieved with a solution that um, uh, provides seamless integration with uh, Business One uh, 9.3 and above HANA and SQL supported. So resource and uh, definition management, work centers, machine, bombs, routings, work orders, production orders, all of that is uh, maintained uh, and visible within link. Uh, you're not having to recreate the wheel there. Um, you can manage multiple constraints from machines, tools, materials, and people. Uh, you can minimize plan loss. You can use drag and drop or auto scheduling to create an optimum plan that minimizes your loss from equipment being idle, being maintained, and product changeover while maximizing order fulfillment. And you can increase visibility and plan adherence with the online dispatching of production plans and interactive job lists uh, for every shop floor uh, execution. So um, next steps, how do you find us? Well, find us in the SAP Certified Solutions direct Directory. Uh, visit linkmes.com forward slash SAP. Uh, contact uh, Logistics to arrange uh, a one-to-one -one demo and um, register for a free 30-day no obligation trial, right? So no obligation free 30-day trial where you can actually have uh, the product installed, connected to your uh, B1 database in a sandbox environment and uh, see your data and plan and schedule and create plans uh, and uh, make sure that the solution is, is right for you. Uh, this is, again, no obligation. We'll provide you with a quotation so you know what uh, the solution will cost should you decide to proceed. But it's a really good opportunity uh, for you as an SAP customer to uh, use this solution, evaluate uh, whether it's the right fit for you and, and uh, hopefully it is and it will improve your planning and scheduling and your uh, production execution. Hopefully you've enjoyed what I presented today. I'm looking forward to all your questions. Uh, thank you for your time.